Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, Availability, Integrity and Confidentiality Within Operational Technology. I'm joined today by Lee Carter, Cybersecurity Product Manager at Solutions PT, Paul Heron, Business Development Manager at Stratus, and Emmanuel Cozzolino, who's the IC Cybersecurity Consultant at Clarity. We are going to be muting the microphones for all attendees during the webinar just to avoid some background noise, but do please feel free to ask questions via the question and answer section in Zoom and I'll monitor it throughout the webinar. We're also, for a little bit of fun, going to be having a Kahoot quiz at the end and there are some Amazon vouchers available, so please listen carefully and join in with the quiz at the end and we'll give you some instructions on how to join as we get nearer the time. So back to the webinar, um, it might seem a little bit of a strange title to some people, but to people who've been working in OT for a while, it might actually have a little bit of resonance. In fact, I started to work in IT nearly 20 years ago, and at the time we didn't call it OT, but the main differences between I2 and OT were described to me as the priorities that we put on these three topics. So with IT, it was always confidentiality first, then integrity and then availability, but it was the reverse for OT. So availability was always the priority with integrity and confidentiality coming um, second and third. And I guess this was borne out by my experience as well. Um, I can remember putting specs together for projects and we'd be putting hardware specs together and the engineer would say to me, yeah, I need to, certainly need um, RAID 10 configuration. If you can put some extra RAM in, I, I need dual redundant power supplies. And at the end, I'd ask if they wanted me to include antivirus and they'd say, no, actually the budget's a bit tight. So can you leave that off for now? Um, and I'm sure many of you can relate to that scenario. But to me, availability and, and cybersecurity are actually part of the same coin, same side of the coin. A cyber incident can not only stop production for a few hours, but actually getting back into a good state can take days and weeks. And we've got customers who've, who've told us the pain that they've been through once they've had a cyber incident and the effect it's had on the business. It's actually probably one of the most disruptive risks to a production environment today. For 30 years, Solutions PT have been the sole distributor of Aviva Wonderware software solutions in the UK and Ireland. And during that time, availability has always been an important part of any solution that we've delivered. In fact, so much so that we've actually been a partner of Stratus, specialists in high availability for over 12 years now. And during that time, we've supplied hundreds of fault tolerant, high availability servers to our customers. But our customers are now also talking to us about cybersecurity. And although that's something that we've been involved with for 30 years, we've had a real focus on this now for probably five years. And we've invited our partners, Clarity, who are OT cybersecurity specialists with whom we are a visionary partner, to join us today to talk about how they see the development of cybersecurity solutions at an OT level. So Lee, I'll start with yourself. Um, I guess our focus, as I say, for, for 30 years now, has been delivering solutions that provide both availability, integrity, and confidentiality. So it's almost second nature to, to us. Um, are you seeing any changes when you're speaking to our customers? And you're on mute, by the way. Sorry, thanks, Tony, and th thanks for the prompt on that one. I could have just been going on my own for a while there. Uh, I'm def we're definitely seeing on the IT side of the house, confidentiality and integrity certainly being very, very highly adopted, uh, you know, uh, with TLS, uh, digital signing, uh, and things like that. I, I don't think you, you see a website nowadays, uh, you know, is, hasn't got some form of uh, SSL encryption on it, which is, is, is all really good. Uh, we're seeing good progress in OT, uh, we're seeing more protocols which have got encryption options, uh, but the, the thing for OT, there's always something a little deeper to think about. Uh, 
Uh, is it always the right approach to uh, to actually encrypt the protocols that you're using on there? Uh, there may be some valid reasons why you don't want to. Uh, for example, if you need to monitor some of the raw traffic, but then if you if you still need to to do that, you've got to have your own risk tolerance uh, and make sure your environment is safe enough. Uh, you know, generally around things like that, you might look to uh, yeah, use protocol tunnelers uh, so you can secure transport over certain legs of the journey uh, and hardware devices that have got things like MagSec on there. But for availability, it's a bit more complex. Uh, and as you rightfully said, it's more important than confidentiality uh, uh, for OT. Uh, when we look at networks, making them highly available, uh, that's a reasonably straightforward process for us. But when we look at things like the application stack, so say, for example, products from Aviva, We've got concept of A servers, B servers that run as a high availability pair. Uh, historians, we can make them highly available too. But then you've got a raft of applications which have got no redundancy option in there whatsoever. Now, what we do see is some of the features from the hypervisor being used to compensate. But when you need to do that, there's prerequisites like shared storage, additional licensing costs. Uh, and so, you know, when you start looking at the, the guests that sit on there, uh, you know, you might have to deploy active, 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 passive, HA, FT, uh, indeed clustering. And, you know, these things often come with a license cost and they just quickly start to add up. Uh, and, and Stratos will be talking about things like this in a bit more detail later. But being able to provide high availability through hardware is a really, really useful tool because it, it fills in the gaps that native software is not capable of. Uh, and it's also available where, you know, things like virtual solutions aren't quite the right fit. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's no right or wrong way here. You know, every solution has got a, a role within the design. But I think I just want to emphasise that you need to explore all the options uh, and not just take the obvious ones to understand the full cost of ownership for any design. And that's something which our solution architects have got a really raft of experience with. Thanks, Lee. And, and it does sound as though there are solutions out there, but you need to make sure that you're using the right one for your situation and, and yeah. the right to do the job, in effect. Um, and also, as you say, complexity, introducing complexity into any environment where people have a day job is, is not great. So, um, so, Paul, I know that Stratus have, have got a really good relationship with Aviva and have been providing fault-tolerant solutions into, OT, into the OT space for a long time now. I, I guess with the current focus around projects such as digitization uh, and data becoming more critical, regulatory compliance, etc., has this triggered any changes that you're seeing in the OT space? Of course, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before I talk about developments, developments we see in the market, um, I just want to uh, tell you the why uh, Stratus Technologies has been collaborating with Aviva Software and Solutions PT. This is this is highly significant for users. So I'll just share a couple of screens, uh, a couple of slides, if I may, to guide me along. And uh, can you see those? Excellent. So um, Stratus technology successfully helps those customers with mission critical applications, as Lee said. So for example, that could be high value or high volume manufacturers where downtime is extraordinarily expensive and where traditional IT solutions and not ideal. And traditional IT refers to the use of commodity servers uh, and commodity operating systems with server clustering or similar to offer high availability. This approach doesn't provide the same level of uptime as a fault tolerant solution. Um, loss of service or data can occur immediately following a component fault as the cluster system recovers. And this can cause downtime or lost data, which can be exceedingly expensive. Complexity, however, is the main challenge. Traditional IT-based high availability solutions need skillful engineering, and that can be time consuming and therefore costly to install and maintain, especially if you don't have the, the required specialist skills 
on hand. Additionally, extra operating system licenses could be required for a traditional uh, IT solution. And with some applications such as SCADA redundancy, solutions also require duplicate runtime licenses. By addressing the areas of availability and complexity, Stratus can provide mission critical compute platforms that are operationally simple, fault tolerant, and offer high value to the user. So operationally simple means Stratus takes care of much of the configuration and management effort using our novel virtualized availability operating system coupled with fault tolerant hardware. The configuration can be completed without significant IT skills and is easily within the scope of SCADA and control engineers. The virtualized, this virtualized availability layer that I mentioned includes advanced diagnostics that provide fault tolerant operation, completely avoiding any application downtime or data loss. The diagnostic signaling and design of the hardware allow quick and easy hot swap of a failed module, following which the availability layer automatically integrates the new hardware module into the system. This autonomous functionality avoids the cost of production downtime and data loss based on computer hardware faults. And this is one of the major cost saving elements uh, that we're talking about. When the downtime savings are added to the other deployment savings, the overall benefit compared to a traditional ICT solution is quite significant. So Stratus caters to the different availability needs of our customers with a portfolio of products and services. The, under the hardware platforms, the FT server on the left is a rack-based fully redundant turnkey solution with integrated product, service and maintenance. It's suitable for most medium to large industrial applications. Every single FT server system is made up of two identical customer replaceable units or CRUs, each with its own processors, memory and storage. All redundant components and subsystems are packaged as a sim single system. So this reduces licensing costs and simplifies management. Uh, it is ideal as an industrial server or micro data center. The hardware in the middle, the ZTC Edge, is a pair of industrial computers connected by a high-speed link to make a single compute unit that can be quickly deployed. And this is the whole idea around the ZTC. Um, it's designed for the factory floor, but powerful enough to provide server room features such as virtualization for small to medium industrial software applications. ZTC stands for zero touch computing to reflect this unit's self-configuring redundancy layer and automatic recovery following the replacement of a node. As well as being developed using security methodologies, the ZTC Edge has some interesting features to assist product hardening as part of a cybersecurity regime. I mean, that's part of the topic for today, this uh, security element. Um, included with those features are a host-based firewall, which allows users to blacklist or whitelist specific IP addresses, domain names, protocols, or ports. And the USB ports can be disabled um, in the BIOS to prevent unauthorized devices from gaining control. The Everrun software product on the right hand side is basically the availability layer out of the ZTC Edge that can run or be deployed on any commodity off the shelf server. And the servers here can be uh, separated across two data centers or two locations to give a topographical um, redundancy as well.
So when a business identifies software applications as mission critical and makes a significant investment in protecting them, it's also good business sense to monitor and protect the integrity of the whole system. Risk, avoidment, uh, risk avoidance and investment protection are enhanced by services from Stratus that dovetail with the hardware features to provide an all-round protection and mitigation solution for long-term operation. So Stratus can provide system-wide monitoring with all of our solutions and utilizing the advanced onboard diagnostics and our active service network, we can watch the system and if something goes wrong, we'll let you know and ship you a replacement part if that's what needed. Uh, and we can also check version data and keep systems secure and patch with patches and updates. So as technology changes around us, sorry, I'm gonna skip the slide here. As technology changes around us, um, we can see that many applications in the in and looking through the lens of a typical manufacturing environment many applications such as uh, erp quality control and asset management are moving to the cloud this is to gain cost benefits through reduced hardware uh, benefits through scalability and business continuity for reasons of latency and data transport The cloud is not a good fit for some applications, especially real-time plant floor applications such as SCADA and plant floor data analytics. There is an advantage, however, if these applications are connected to the cloud and adopt the best of the IT world practices while still supporting operational imperatives. This is an emerging application space called the edge. Cybersecurity, efficient, efficient system administration, and hardware consolidation are very strong drivers in the realm of IT, but relatively new and just going through the adoption phase for the operational technology space. As mentioned earlier by Tony, there, there are some um, complementary but somewhat conflicting drivers in the OT space where you're mainly concerned with availability, uh, ruggedized equipment and ease of maintenance. Also the IT skill set may not exist or be readily available. So the convergence of IT and OT is happening at the edge. However, when it comes to availability, traditional IT solutions are too complex as we've already seen and existing industrial computers don't offer the IT-like server room capability needed. So a dedicated edge compute platform is highly beneficial. Oh, I'm just gonna go back one. Let's bear with me, let's track a little bit. So you can also see in the right hand application box in the industrial software in the edge there that cybersecurity applications for OT environments are growing uh, for obvious reasons. Again, due to the complexity of IT based solutions, an OT focused cybersecurity application such as Clarity would be greatly beneficial. And it would also be enhanced by an always on edge compute platform. So you don't want your cyber secure and security night watchman going to sleep, do you? Uh, adopting these beneficial new architectures can be a heavy lift for some companies as, as I'm sure you're aware. Few companies can afford all the required expertise to pull together the various elements. And this means collaboration uh, is the difference between success and costly disaster. This drives another market development that we're seeing um, where users are seeking close collaboration with installers and suppliers to manage a, a technology adoption. So 
Stratus Technology is, is an Aviva technology partner, avoid providing edge compute platforms that support Aviva software. Technology partners share processes and intellectual property to create solutions that provide flexibility, interoperability, and customer value. Solutions PT is the focal point for user supplier collaboration with the cross-platform skills that they have and the consultative approach that they can bring to, uh, to any project to ensure a successful completion. So Tony, back to you. Paul, thank you very much. And it, it was interesting to hear, it kind of guess it backs up what we're talking about. That, that companies like Stratus are already building in some cybersecurity um, protection into the products that you're developing. Um, I, I guess the other thing for me as well, I've been working with Stratus for, for quite a while, but actually the, the development of your product range and, and giving that flexibility for different architectures to deliver the same benefits. It's, um, yeah, it's really impressive. And, and um, you know, I, I I'm a big fan. I think it's uh, it takes away that complexity, and that's what people are really looking for. Um, thanks for that, Paul. And, and Emanuele, I guess in a similar vein, whenever I speak to customers about clarity, one of the things that that they're really drawn to is the flexibility that the Clarity Suite provides, and and actually the platform. Um, so it would be good to maybe just talk to people about the platform, how it integrates um, to give customers additional intelligence. Voila, do you hear me now? Yeah, yes, I'm mute. You okay. Now. So first of <laughs> all, thank you, Tony. No. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Uh, and first of all, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you all. It's a pleasure, of course, for me to be here. So um, understanding the real challenges of today's OT environment is crucial, of course, and guiding you and helping you having full visibility of you know, a customer environment, identifying the risks and the vulnerabilities associated, reducing the threat landscape and risks, harmonize and interoperate with IT security controls and protecting your organization resiliency through tree detection as well as remediating capability of the vulnerability prioritization is what really matters. So here is how the Clarity platform could really help you. So the platform in itself uh, realized numerous functions across the reveal, the detect, the protect and the respond and the connect paradigm. And uh, what's interesting is that this is the only OT security solution that allows to integrate our two solutions together. So we have the CTD on top and the SRA here and benefits from their interconnection. So uh, let's briefly introduce our two solutions. We have the CTD, the continuous detection that will provide interesting future and will help you on different points. We have the asset management, the risks and vulnerability management, the event correlation, threat detection and OT network segmentation. It's completely passive solution. So it sits out of band on span port of managed switch and safely monitoring the network. It has zero impact and no footprint on the ICS network. So this is good to underline. So you can ensure zero plant downtime, okay? And then we have the SRA, the secure remote access solution that provides a policy-based control and monitored remote access into your ICS network. So it is typically used by employees and third party contractors to safely access and manage OT assets in the ICS network from outside the plant. So some of the key features of the solution are that it's a very light system. It's simple to implement and configure and it's designed and created specifically for OT environment. And that is able to replace the multiple remote connection systems that you may already have in place in your environment. Uh, it could be like jump servers, a simple VPN aggregator or OT gateways, for example, okay? So what's interesting to underline here is that, is that these two solutions uh, integrate with each other and we can monitor, analyze and respond to a live uh, event that could bring to an incident, for example, 
and we will actually see an example of this integration together, okay, how they work and how we could help you, for example. So these capabilities are all integrated and connecting to your existing infrastructure. So rather than contend with multiple point products into your environment, you can leverage a comprehensive platform with the rich set of capabilities. Okay, so now uh, enough from, you know, theoretical point of view, let's jump to the interesting stuff. And let's go to see what the system does and an example of a use case and how users interact with the system. Okay. So the, the first thing uh, I want to show Manuel, you is... Manuel, yeah? Manuel, so I don't, I don't think, I don't think your, your screen's been shared, Emmanuel. Ah, yeah? Just, uh, yeah, I think that's dropped off. Ah, uh, but from the first slide? Did they see this? No, no. Uh, it, it, it popped up for a second and that disappeared. Ah, okay. Okay, so I will leave it like for 30 seconds and they can just click pause probably, right? To see it or how do you want me to do? Is it fine? Yeah, I, I think you explained it really well and I think that just gives a, a gra graphical yeah. representation. Yeah, so ju just to resume, this is the platform. Here we have the rich set of capabilities. Sorry guys for the... the uh, this uh, what happened on top we have the ctd with all the asset management risks and even correlation tree detection and ot network segmentation and on the bottom we have the sra that we will see a demo in a, in a second um, that will provide you uh, you know uh, a policy based control and monitored remote access into your ics network okay so this is actually uh, how it looks like how they interoperate but we will see it anyways live so it's even better i think Okay, so um, are you seeing now the screen, right? With the central, yeah, all good. So yeah. uh, the, the first thing that I wanted to show you here is uh, what the administrator interface looks like. So we are now connected to the SRA central component with an admin user, okay? So from an admin interface, I can define all of the assets within the environment that users can get to. So uh, what I want to point out here, for example, is that I have four server that my user can connect to. Um, we have some Windows server, for example, that I can RDP to. And then we have a web interface that we can go over through HTTPS, for example. So what's interesting is also to see what a regular user with no admin right can see. So let's log in with John, okay? it's a regular user, and let's see what he actually can see. So first thing we will notice is that from his access, he can only see two uh, servers um, instead of the four that the admin you know, was able to see. So on the front end, before users even remote in, we can set a very granular access control. We can set who gets us uh, access to what and what assets uh, they can actually see in their environment. Okay? And so this is very important as we know in the OT space, where you commonly have many third parties that all need access and you want to be sure that they can only have access to their assets, okay? So you don't want, for example, that a third party get in and touch asset of another third party, for example. So now that I have defined the access of John and to what as, uh, asset he can get to, I can add, for example, an additional layer of control on top of that. So you can see here, for example, uh, that if John wants to connect to this engineering workstation, he needs to request an access. So what this means is that in addition to needing to get credentials to log on into the SRA system, uh, um, he also need an administrator to approve his access to this asset, okay? So let's go ahead and see, you know, for example, say that uh, we would like to have an access for an hour. The reason could be, you know, maintenance reason. And at this point, when he send the request, of course, we can even schedule it, okay? And say, okay, I would like to have this hour of maintenance uh, in uh, one week, for example, okay? So once he sent the request, the user John is stuck, okay? So he now needs the admin to approve this access uh, in order to access the engineering workstation. Otherwise, he won't be able to do that. So from an admin perspective, uh, we can now see the pending request, uh, the pending request, sorry, coming from John. Uh, we know it's for maintenance, for example, that is only one hour and is coming to connect to an engineering workstation on the west side uh, production plant, for example. Okay. 
So we know that the user John is coming in and is requesting uh, th this access to the server, and we can choose wherever or not to approve or deny uh, the access. Okay? So I can also define who can have this particular request access permission to which server, and we can also define that it needs to happen only during certain hours, for example. It's all very simple and easy to configure. So, of course, we approved it, and now let's see what John actually see. Okay, so the, the access is approved, and the, as we can see, he can now connect okay, to the server itself. So uh, we have gone through uh, an additional layer of approval, okay, because John already authenticated to the system, but we need an, another additional layer of approval from the administrator. Now we can actually, as you can see, connect to the system. Uh, and few things that I want to point out that could be interesting for you to know from a cybersecurity as well point of view uh, is that when we log into the system, the first thing is that we are only getting a window uh, into the system. Okay, when we do an RDP session to this target asset, I'm not actually on the system itself. I'm not opening an RDP session directly um, from my laptop, for example, to this asset. Okay, this is actually all controlled by the SRA system and all it's happening through a web browser, okay? I'm using Chrome. So the SRA system only serves uh, a window of the RDP session to John, to the user, okay? The other thing I want to point out is that I didn't have to provide any credentials. I don't know if you uh, saw that, to connect to this Windows machine. So uh, this is one of the other key features that uh, SRA has, is that he has a, a password vault, okay? Uh, so rather than giving all of your third parties actual credentials on your machines, which leads to a lot of issues with password safety, because if you have, for example, a third party vendor uh, and one of their users leave, for example, you will need to go changing password on all of your machines in your environment. So you can control all of that with the SRA system and you still get the security of them uh, requiring the authentication and uh, approval through our system. So it again creates another layer of uh, you know, security for that user from the system that they log into. To. So uh, another thing that SRA allows us to do in real time is that now that John is connected to this machine, you see he can do everything you want. He can even modify a line of code on PLC. Uh, he can make a configuration download on PLC, uh, an upload, for example. He can do uh, everything he wants. So what's really interesting is that from an admin point of view now, uh, uh, as you can see, um, the administrator has the capability to see all the active session done through the web, okay? And this is actually what we have done with John, uh, and open any session depending on the right permission and see what people are doing in real time, okay? So we can click open actually and see what John is doing in real time, okay? So I will switch screen of John on my left just to show you that you know I'm moving uh, windows on the left and you can actually see live uh, what John is doing, okay? And another thing that is really interesting is that uh, they can interact through a chat, okay? So for example, John can write, the admin can answer back and everything is being recorded. Of course, you can configure to record or not depending on the group permission and uh, all the chat as well is being, uh, you know, uh, saved, okay? So this is really interesting. So let's go back to what we are saying about the admin. So why this is interesting? First of all, you can have full visibility live of what actually uh, uh, you know, a third party contractor, for example, is doing. So this is really interesting because usually as we know in DOT, we have no visibility at all of what they actually do. Uh, so we can troubleshoot issue in real time, for example. So this gives us a huge amount of auditability before user log. Uh, login because I can see, for example, we can define who gets access to what system, what access they can actually see, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and actually, for example, if he's doing something that could harm the production, okay, let's say it's not at all malicious, but could harm the production anyway, we can actually disconnect the user. So this is another thing really interesting. We can click disconnect or, for example, disconnect all session at once. And actually the user John will be disconnected from the session. Okay. So in fact, if I come back to John now, voila, the session is ended. Okay. 
So he will need to request again access in order to access the engineering workstation. OK, so this gives us a huge amount of control about what the user is doing while logged and connected to a target servers and allow me to monitor all of their behavior. OK, so this is both before the user logs in, we give granular access, simple onboarding onto the party vendor. While the user is logged in, we give you very simple control over both reviewing live what they are doing, interacting with the user. And ultimately, admin gets the full control of disconnecting sessions if needed. And after the actual operation of maintenance, in this case, for example, if we want to see what the user did, we also have the video of the recording. OK, so just to show you where we actually have it, it's here. It will be present in the session. Once the, pro the video will be processed, you will be able to open the video of three minutes and 59 seconds. OK, so this will give you full visibility into the entire remote access process. OK, and here is actually where the platform and the integration with CTD is really interesting and come in handy to have the full visibility to your OT environment. OK, if we now open the CTD uh, solution, OK, if we go into the tree detection alerts menu, we can see that we have a new alert. It's called the configuration download here that was done on a PLC actually through a remote session. OK, so we now have here in this page uh, all the information related to this particular alert. You can see we have the root cause analysis, what happened in a chronological order. Um, you can even see uh, actually the line of code that was changed during this operation. OK, so you really have full visibility on what was done. and. Most important and uh, most important for what we are talking about today, the platform itself. Um, you will see the remote access session here, OK? And you will actually be able to open the session, OK? So, uh, for example, you can go back uh, to look a video if the session was terminated, OK? And if actually the session was still live, you can open the session and disconnect the user. Exactly as we have done to SRA, you will be able to do it also from the CTD. OK, so this is actually the, the page I was talking about, just uh, free. But anyways, this is what uh, I was talking about. So coming back to uh, SRA, OK, uh, uh, I get to, uh, you know, um, to get identified before uh, I get logged in. OK. So this is really important with our access control. I get to identify while they are logged in with our eye over thy shoulder. That is the live session that we saw with our you know, control function. And then after the fact, I get the full auditability and visibility into what they are doing to, you know, to our recording session future that we just saw. OK, here actually you click open and you see the video of what was done. OK, and this is actually what you see from CTD. If you have an active session, you can click open and you can see live or you can see the video if it was terminated. So um, the important thing is that we provide you, we try to provide you with the full visibility into your environment. And even though this was a really high level view of what SRA does with an example of integration with the CTD and some of its key future, uh, of course, we will be happy to give you more information about it. And I hope that you found this useful. Uh, that you, you know, will be able to use the, the SRA and the CTD as well into your OT environment and your plant networks. So thank you for listening. Emanuele, that was great. Thank you very much for that. It's also quite an interesting um, angle that I haven't thought of, that, that many people for availability rely on um, third parties, OEMs, vendors, being able to manage their system and, and for efficiency, manage it remotely and, and for other reasons under the current circumstances. So by being able to allow them to do that in a secure way, again, just brings that security and, and availability story together, which is, is hugely important. Um, now I have had a message through during your presentation. Um, somebody was saying that the chat and the question and answers aren't, ah, there we go. So I think question and answers is working, but uh, chat not. So if you have got any questions and answers, please do put them through. But I have had one sent through to me, Emanuele, that I'll, um, 
I, I'll just ask you now if that's okay. So um, I've had a question through saying that SRI sounds um, like a really good solution. Uh, the, the, the person actually currently uses VPN for remote access. Um, would you, what would you say the differences are between SRA and VPN for, for somebody who's looking at a, a really secure remote access solution? So first of all, uh, let me just uh, share again. I like this to be interactive, let's say, okay? Um, I don't know if you see the screen. So uh, SRA, the use case I just showed to you, it's a web browser based one. It means that we are completely clientless, okay? So this is the first difference with the VPN solution, okay? To have a VPN solution in place and to work with the VPN, of course, you will need to install a client, okay? So this is the, the main uh, thing. Second thing is that you will not have the full visibility of what we talked about, okay? That means recording of the video, live session on it, everything linked to the visibility, okay? You will, need, you will have only a client. If you are lucky, you have the visibility on who did the connection and that's all. Okay, with the VPN. So the, the example I show you was uh, through a web browser, but actually uh, SRA also has a VPN client in it, okay? For another use case. I didn't show it to you today because you know, for time matter, let's say, but of course, uh, if the, um, the person who asked the customer uh, can see the screen, I don't know, I zoom it a little bit. You can see that you can actually configure your own VPN client uh, uh, using, you know, uh, uh, authorizing a specific subnet and even configuring any port you would like. So for example, why to use this particular uh, VPN client uh, is to have the visibility you are missing because you now are controlling all from the same uh, central point that it's SRA. So you will have both the web browser and VPN under the same control. So this is great, first of all. Uh, and secondly, for example, all of our customers use this to directly connect to a PLC, for example. They don't even want to connect to an internal jump server or stuff like that. They want to directly connect to a PLC so they can do it through SRA as well. As you can see, in this example, of course, we are using a mod passport. So you can actually connect to a PLC on this particular subnet. So we actually have it VPN as well. So we are just, you know, uh, depending on the use case, we adapt ourselves. Great. And what, I guess while you've got the um, that screen open as well, we've had another question um, asking, is SRA easy to deploy? Yeah, so uh, you will see we have, uh, you know, technically, let's say, I will try to use a few, a few words. We will provide you with targz file, okay? So you will only need to have an image of CentOS, okay? So depending on the version, of course, you will need the CentOS 7.9, for example, okay, for the requirement. But it's really easy. Um, uh, you know, it's nearly all automatic. Okay, you will just need to select the component you want to install because SRA uh, has a, a two-level uh, architecture. Okay, two layer. The first one is the central one; it's the upper component, and then we have the lower one that is the full site component that actually you will install in the plant itself. So it's really easy. You will just need to click on the component and create the link between the two. Of course, is everything documented uh, and we will help them, of course, if needed, or, you know, our gr great partners that sometimes are even more technical than us, uh, for example, Lee. So yeah. for sure, there will be no problem. Excellent. Yeah, I, I must admit, I, one of the things I really like is the fact that that central and site server control that connection, that SSH tunnel. So. It even takes care of the firewall rules. And so it, it does really simplify the process. That's certainly my feedback from when we've deployed this. Um, now that the, um, so we've had another question through on SRA. Can we transfer files using SRA? Great. So yes, guys, I, I really love you. Uh, it, it was just for a matter of time that I didn't show you, but yes. <laughs> so our third use case is actually secure file transfer, okay? So as you can see, we have a file management here, okay? So it's really interesting as well. Um, wh why, for example, you should use a secure file transfer with the SRA, okay? So uh, it's common, for example, to have files uh, like configuration files uh, or documentation even that need to be uh, moved onto a naughty target. 
Uh, and this may need to take place into the web browser itself. So I will show you an example if you want, or uh, uh, separately from the user interface. So we can actually provide you with a way to download the file through FTP, anonymous, uh, through SSH. Okay, you can use a tool, any tool, uh, you know, uh, Potty, for example, um, and SFTP. Okay, so we can actually do that and offer you this possibility. Just to show you one slide, for example, uh, this is actually the web browser uh, uh, use case we saw today together. This is the second one we are talking about with the first question, the VPN one, and the third one is the secure file transfer. Okay. Uh, voila. So I don't know if uh, we have time, but I can even show you how it is easy to do. We're not uh, actually seeing that, Emanuele. Is it? Uh, we're not seeing your screen. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Great. So uh, you can go to the file management, create folder, really easy. Uh, enter the groups, okay, of the people you want to give permission to. Group not found. Great. Okay. Anyways, you will create the folder. Okay. Once created the folder, depending on the rights that you have, you can, of course, upload the file. And on the other side, for example, John, voila, let's go back to John. He will only have two menu, really easy, okay? The first one, of course, is through web browser. The second one is to use the VPN. And the third one is to use the secure file transfer. That's all. So he will access this if he has the right permission, of course, okay? So he will click it and he could download it directly from the browser as well. It's really easy. Or you can connect through different ways, as say the FTP, SFTP, or SSH. Okay. Thank you, Emanuele. Um, sure. Paul, as you're uh, unmuting your microphone, because I've got a couple of questions from you, I'll uh, I'll just ask people to um, either on their mobile phones, on desktop, on laptop, um, if you do log on to Kahoot.it then uh, we'd love you to take part in our Kahoot quiz in a couple of minutes. In the meantime, Paul, I will... Uh, got a couple of questions for you as well. So um, we've had a question to what happens if I lose an edge device or comms to one of the ZTCs? How fault tolerant is it? Right, yeah, good, uh, yeah, good question. Um, if you can imagine the scene that we have two industrial box PCs, there are two types of networks associated with that. One type that connects the two together for synchronization and availability for the fault tolerance. And the other type of network we call the business network or it's your automation network or data network. And each node has both types. So you would join the two nodes together with an availability network, and then you can connect your business devices to the other network types. If one of the ZTC edge uh, devices um, fails, then the, the network into that failed device is routed across the availability layer to the other device to follow the primary uh, running of the of the application. So yes, it is fault tolerant in that respect. And that would be the same if you lost um, an, a network, uh, you know, a network device, it would route through the the other node across the availability links. I hope that answers the question. It, it answers the first question. So I've got your next question coming right. up now. <laughs> yeah, good. Fire away. Um, so yeah, uh, I've had a question. ZTC doesn't use VMware. Is it still cyber secure? Okay, um, that's correct. ZTC Edge doesn't use VMware. It uses Stratus's own availability layer, which is based on Linux, and it's designed to provide the fault tolerance and the synchronization and the virtualization. And the virtualization allows you to run any virtual machine that you can run on VMware. So it's just as cyber secure in that respect. Um, and I, I'm, I'm still trying to work out the linkage between the VMware and the cyber security. What I mentioned in the, in the discussion earlier 
was that the ZTC Edge has some inbuilt product hardening features. So this is about accessing the ZTC Edge uh, configuration console. So there's, there's um, an inbuilt firewall to manage traffic. Um, there are, yeah, there's the ability to disable USB ports. So it, it gives you a good platform to have this multi-layer of defense, this product hardening, hardening and the application layer hardening through, through what runs on your virtual machine. Uh, and again, I hope that answers the question. Fabulous. Yes. Thanks, guys. I, and thank you for taking those questions as well. I know it's always scary on a live webinar to, to take questions, but appreciate that. OK, so, yeah, thanks to all the presenters. Um, we are going to now move on to a little bit more fun, hopefully. We're, well, that was fun. Sorry, that came out wrong. Uh, a different type of fun um, with a Kahoot quiz. So hopefully you've all accessed uh, kahoot.it. And if you have, you should be able to input the pin code. You all may, also may have heard uh, some music in the background, so I do apologize for that. Is that not showing up? I can see it, I can see it. We've had our first entrance, so there are people who are accessing that. So we'll give a couple of minutes for some people to start joining. say that was a benefit Lee. <laughs> so anyway I will uh, you can hear my dulcet tones instead so yeah 30 seconds now for any more to join we've got another question come in Thank you. That's another vote for without sound. So obviously there's something about my voice on a Thursday afternoon. Right. OK, if we're all ready, I'm going to start the quiz. Um, it's a mix of different types of questions. Hopefully most of them you'll have heard today. If not, then some good guessing is required. Here we go. Okay, so question one. How long have Solutions PT been partnered with Stratus? Hopefully you were all paying attention. Heard that during the presentation. 10 seconds to go, still three answers shy. There we go. So, Seven of you got it right. Congratulations. 12 years. It seems like only yesterday. So get ready for question two. Oh, and we've got a leader at the moment. Dying out in the lead, but a few people hot on your heels. So question two could make all the difference. Oh. 
which cybersecurity solutions are listed in Solutions PT cybersecurity offerings? I know this one. 10 seconds left. And we're back to our eight answers. Okay. So the answer was all of the above. What's that done to the scores? Well, we've got a new leader. Well done to Wakey. Pushing out into the lead. Question three. Plenty of time. What SSO does Clarity SRA support? So SAML, HTT Basic, Active Directory, or all of the above. I'm not sure we covered this in the presentation, so this may need to be a guess. And it was well guessed. Six of you got it right. It is all of the above, so very flexible. Has that changed the lead at all? Wake it, saying you're on fire. So congratulations, but still plenty of time to go. Still plenty of people on your heels. Next question. Stratus has an industrial edge compute platform called ZTC Edge. What does the ZTC stand for? So we certainly have this one in the presentation. So zero touch computing, zero typing computing, zero technical content, Zebra Tango Charlie. Hopefully you're all listening carefully. And we've got our eight answers. Seven people were. Congratulations. Zero touch computing. Oh, Dave, Dave, you've got a streak now. Your four, four winning streak. Wakey's still ahead. Baz on his heels. Jeff, still plenty of time. Question five, halfway through. How long have Solutions PT had an enhanced focus on cybersecurity? So this was something I spoke about. So five years, 10 years, 25 years, or 30 years. There we go. We've got eight answers very quickly there. Five years. So yeah, there were a few red herrings in there. We have been focused on cybersecurity for 30 years, but we've had an enhanced focus for the last five years. So congratulations on getting that one right. Oh, and there has been a slight change in the leaderboard. Question six. True or false, Stratus Industrial Edge Compute platforms are only for a specific industry sector. So blue for true or red for false? There we go, all eight answers. False, they go across many industry sectors. And I think on one of the slides, Paul was showing some of those industry sectors. So unfortunately for, for three of you, that was a false question. Next question. Scoreboard still moving on. Wakey's moving into a strong lead now, but plenty of time, plenty of points to be played for. Another true or false. Clarity SRA by default allows users to access all assets in the OT environment. So is that true or false? Again, we've had them all within the 10 seconds. Six right and two wrong. It's false. It doesn't allow you have to set up the users um, and allow them access to a, a particular assets. Ah, straight on to the next question. We missed the, the leaderboard. SRA will integrate with, so we've got ServiceNow, Seams, Active Directory, or all of the above. And with all the answers in, the answer is all of the above. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Well, Wakey still out in front, but Baz and Dave, hard on your heels. Jeff coming up as well. Still anyone's game. 
Question nine, what is Solutions PT's partner status with Clarity? It's a global, visionary, authorized or standard. Again, you've got to think back to my section for this. Visionary, so only one collect, correct answer. I did mention it in my first bit, but I know that's a while ago now. The final question. Stratus ZTC Edge is described as cheap and cheerful, simple, protected, autonomous, large and reliable, or all of the above. And with all questions in, all answers in, let's have a look at the podium. Dave, congratulations in third place. Second place, Baz, and Wakey the winner. So congratulations to you three. Um, I'm going to put my email up at the end of the presentation. So if you can email me through with your email addresses, we'll make sure that you get rewarded for your uh, knowledge and listening. Well done, everybody. So... <laughs> Yes, there you go. A round of applause as well from the uh, from the panel. Um, so listen, all that's left for me to do really is to, to thank the panellists for their time today. It's always amazing when you can bring subject experts together and you can hear the clarity on, on their view, if you'll excuse the pun, um, of the world and how we can actually approach some of these issues that do cause us headaches on a day to day basis. Um, for me, I think what I've learned today is that some of these solutions can be complex and it's all about making sure that you choose the right one for your circumstances and the one that's going to deliver the right benefits for you. So hopefully um, following this, we'd love you to get in touch with us. We'd love to tell us about your circumstances and let's have a look and see if we can help you make sure that you're choosing the right solutions to enhance your business. Thank you very much for joining. We know your time is precious and um, we really appreciate you taking the time out to, to join us today. If you can hear me, guys, I'm going to jump. Thank you so much.
for the efforts today. Well done, Emanuele. Your English is absolutely superb. Um, I have to jump on another call, so I'll just say bye bye. Yeah, no problem. Bye -bye. We'll uh, bye -bye. speak again. Thanks very much indeed, Paul. No problem. Take really care. Bye bye. It. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm unfortunately going to have to go to a, another meeting as well. So thanks very much indeed, everybody. It's, uh, it was really appreciated and um, great content and, and a really good chat. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Bye, guys. Have a nice day. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.